Hello and welcome back to Requel TV's training tune-ups. I'm Joe Farewell and today we're going to be diving into concealed carry from a seated position. Some of the concepts that you need to understand as far as drawing and shooting accurately from a seated position, whether that's in a restaurant or a vehicle. Now most ranges around the country aren't going to allow you to draw or shoot from a seated position unless you're part of a specialty class or something like that. However, if you do have that option, I highly recommend that you take advantage of it as long as you do so safely. One of the first things you need to understand is when you drop your height, you need to make sure that you move your targets down as well. We don't want to send rounds over the berms, so we're going to set these targets up low on the target stands, and we're going to look through it from our shooting position to make sure all of the rounds are passing through that target into the berm behind it. That way we don't have any stray rounds, we don't have any safety issues outside of the inherent dangers of shooting a gun. If you don't have access to a range that allows you to shoot from a seated position, go ahead and try this out in dry fire. There's nothing wrong with that. You can still get a lot of good reps working from a seat, from the inside your vehicle, as long as you're doing so safely and make sure your gun's clear. Now the shooting itself isn't gonna be any different, shooting seated versus shooting standing. The same fundamentals apply as far as getting your sights on target, making sure you get the effective trigger work so we get our hits. However, there are a few safety considerations that we gotta take into account outside of the one that we already talked about, which is the height of the targets. When we're practicing, make sure that you're being conscious of when that or where that muzzle is at all times. We wanna make sure our finger's outside the trigger guard, and yes, this goes back to the four rules of firearm safety, but that is the fundamental way that you don't get shot. So one of the things I'm looking for is if we're seated in a normal chair, what direction are we running this muzzle as we draw? So I carry appendix, if you carry it uh, the three o'clock or the five o'clock or something like that, that's gonna give you another aspect to think about. But working from appendix, one thing I wanna think about is the direction that muzzle takes as I come up on the target. So if I have a target directly in front of me, it's a non-issue, right? I can literally come up here, bring that gun up, and I never cross any part of my body. No flagging, no lasering, no issues there. However, if I have a target off to my left or my right, left, right, backwards but that's okay um, if I have a target off to my left or right one thing I want to make sure I'm aware of is where that muzzle is going if we're in a vehicle a lot of times because of the steering wheel you're not going to be able to avoid flagging your leg that's something you need to take into account that's something you need to train for in dry fire to make sure that we are very conscious of where our trigger finger is so as I come up from here one of the things I want to do is bring it up and around my leg so that it's not ever crossing over top of my my femoral artery here. If I'm going off and to the right, I'm gonna do the same thing, punch it out and bring it around and basically lean away from the direction of the target. Leaning away from the direction of the target allows me to square up my shoulders to it and establish a good natural point of aim, which we've talked about in the past. If you search some of the other Recoil TV videos, you're gonna see that video where we talk about natural point of aim and getting that gun in alignment with our eyes without having to think about it. So as I square up to that target, I lean away from it, I can bring that gun up and I have basically the same shooting stance that I would have in a situation where I'm standing on a static range. At this point, I can take effective and accurate rounds on target. I can also manipulate my hips back across if I need to cross over to the front or the right hand side. So let's go ahead and run a couple of drills just from a seated position. We'll run it static here and then we'll also run it from a vehicle. Stay tuned. So the first rule that we're going to do is kind of a scenario based idea where we're sitting in a place of business, a restaurant, a coffee shop, something like that. Some place where you're in the public, you're sitting down and somebody comes in and immediately shows aggression, whether that's a, they're brandishing a gun, they're shooting shots off, they're actively stabbing somebody. Um, those are bad things to think about, but it's the mental side of things that you've got to start to process now before it happens so that when it does happen, if it does happen to you, you're not taken by surprise and you're already thinking through the processes that you would start to do if that should happen. So one of the things I wanna think about is, can I get out of this position? Because sitting down is not a good spot to be, right? It's the classic sitting duck metaphor. If we can move, that is ideal. However, sometimes that's not an option. So think about when you sit down in a place of business, where are you sitting? Are you sitting in a booth or are you sitting at a table? Because if I'm sitting at a table, I can simply stand up and push this chair away from me and it's a non-issue. Non However, if I'm stuck in a booth, I have to now slide out. I have to push people out of my way in order to get up into a standing position. So the first rule that we're gonna do is just simply draw from a seated position, from concealment, and see what kind of work we can do. Stand by. So 
So that was a 215. We got a good group on that target, made sure we got our hits. And I want you to pay attention to something. When I go to draw, I actively push myself back, which extends my diaphragm here, allows me to take good breaths, and it clears the path for me to clear this holster. If I'm folded over top of my appendix carry, when I go to carry or when I go to draw, it's going to be very difficult to get into a good grip on that gun. Now we're going to go ahead and build on that and we're going to work on two targets. We're going to shoot the first two rounds into the target in front of us. We're going to transition into the target that's directly to my left. And that's going to show you how we shift our hips in a position to make sure that we're getting a good effective shooting platform no matter the direction of the target. Stand by. All right, so on that one, you can see where as I transitioned from the target in front of me to the target on my left, I was able to shift my hips over, squaring up my chest to that target so I can get a good shooting platform. If I didn't do that, if I simply rotated my arms around, what that would look like would be something like this. And that's not gonna give me a good clear sight picture. It's not gonna give me a good shooting platform. I'm significantly less likely to hit my hits or get my hits that way. All right, now the third drill that we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna start off on the right hand target. And this is where I really want you to pay attention to how you're shifting your hips and where the muzzle of that gun is tracking. I wanna bring that out as soon as I clear the holster around my leg and shift my hips so that I'm able to get a good sight picture on that target, break those shots. As soon as I take those two shots, I'm gonna transition back around and shoot the left side as well while maintaining good muzzle discipline and trigger control. Check it out. That was a 317. So you can see the value of that drill just as a seated position. We can get good accurate shots on target. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like from a vehicle. Now shooting out of a vehicle has its own issues that you have to pay attention to. And I highly recommend that you drive fire this before you ever do it live. And make sure you're doing so in a private place like your garage or somewhere where nobody's gonna see you pointing a gun out of a vehicle. Obviously we need to point the gun in a safe direction. We need to make sure it's dry before we go into any of the dry fire practices. One of the big things I want you to pay attention to though is making sure that we're not flagging ourselves like we talked about already. And one easy way to do that is when we draw, we point the gun straight at the steering wheel. If we point the gun straight at the steering wheel, it's just a reference point. It doesn't have to be the actual steering wheel. It could be at the dashboard or something like that. But we point the gun up and away from us before we drive to a target. If we drive straight to the target from our holster, we're gonna cross right over a femoral artery and that's a problem if you're running your finger in the trigger guard. If you're not, obviously that's gonna be one of those situations where you have to break two rules to get shot, but it is still not advisable. One easy solution, like I said, bring that gun straight in front of you and then we shift over or we shift over this way. When we're working out of the vehicle, pay attention to where your seatbelt is. How are you able to get a hold of your gun with your seatbelt on? One thing that I will do when I'm driving is I will simply take my seatbelt and I will tuck that in behind my gun. Now my gun is clear, I'm able to access it if I need to, and it's not in the, the seatbelt itself is not in the way. If we do get into a situation where we need it, I can lean back, I can get a good grip on that pistol, I can bring it up, shift over to one side or the other, and get accurate rounds on target that way. While we're doing this, I want you to be really mindful of everything else in the vehicle because you don't wanna shoot your car. If you're in a course, make sure you're not shooting the instructor's car. But we're gonna go ahead and take a couple of shots here out of the vehicle. I'm gonna roll my window down. We're gonna load this up, again, keeping it pointed in a safe direction. And we're just gonna go ahead and run this live as we would in a instructor course. So if you guys do want information on training from a vehicle, that's something that I can offer. You can check out my website, farewellfirearms.com. Hit me up on social media, we can talk about it there. But let's go ahead and run this drill real quick. I'm just gonna be working on the target out here on the left side first, and then we'll do both left side and right side. This is my vehicle, so I'm not gonna shoot through the windshield today. <laughs> Stand by. So as you can see there, we're making sure that we keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction at all times. I'm still shifting my hips and my shoulders over to be able to get effective rounds on target. And I'm making sure that when I go back to reholster, my finger is clear of the trigger guard. It still travels that path where it's not pointing at my legs or pointing at anything important. And I'm doing so safely at all times. So outside of the safety aspect, I also want you to pay attention to the legal side of things. 
it's important that you look up your local laws, your state laws, and make sure that you understand exactly where you can carry on your person, where you can carry in your vehicle, the status of the gun, where it has to be, and if you have to notify law enforcement if you get pulled over. It's really important that you know those laws so that you don't get hemmed up on something just because you were ignorant of the issue. Of the issue. So as we get into the next drill, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw from concealment here. I'm gonna shoot two rounds on the target on the left, transition two rounds on the target on the right. Make sure we get good hits on those and I'm shifting my body weight inside the vehicle to make sure I'm squaring up my platform to get effective hits. All right, stand by. All right, so there you go. We've got some good hits on target. I did three rounds instead of two, but that's okay, I like to shoot stuff. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up as well is we're in a vehicle. That means we have transportation. Now, if the vehicle's dead or we're stuck or anything like that, obviously that removes the ability to, to remote, remove ourselves from the situation. However, if you have the opportunity to leave, that is way better than getting yourself into a shooting situation. So on a defensive and a legal standpoint, get away from the situation if possible. If the worst comes to the worst, be effective in your use of that deadly force. I hope that helps you guys out, and I'll see you next time on Recoil TV's Training Tune-Ups.